I will talk about the Enterprise Linux crypto story. I'm part of Red Hat crypto team, so let's go. So this is the agenda. I will give some introduction and then talk about uh, some challenge, what we provide for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, how we choose our crypto, uh, core crypto libraries, and give a summary in there. So the introduction. Uh, Let's start with a hypothetical statement. As an enterprise system vendor, I want to sell my system to customers. It must be secure, interoperable, and have high quality. But it is, sounds reasonable, but how to fulfill those requirements? Uh, fulfilling these requirements are not a responsibility only for the crypto part of the system. It's a shared responsibility uh, across all system components. Uh, the crypto loan can't guarantee the security of the system. So in this talk, I will restrict the scope only for the crypto point of view. So the challenge. How to keep the system secure? Uh, for illustration, look this padlock. It was once secure, but it's, with time it got rusty and needs replacement. Is this, uh, it's not different with crypto. The definition of securing crypto changes with time. Uh, flaws in algorithms are discovered, for example, RC4, MD5, and uh, protocols like SSLv3 can no longer be considered secure. Uh, the threat model changes. Uh, in the past, sharing the processor with other applications uh, wouldn't be concerning, but uh, now we, we have containers, and uh, that became much more common. And we've, we've been seeing uh, a lot of um, attacks, which takes advantage of, uh, advantage of this uh, situation, like uh, timing attacks and uh, cache-based attacks. Uh, the computational power increases with time, uh, which means we have to uh, use more and like longer and longer keys to to avoid uh, having problems. And uh, small keys became unsecure. So uh, the crypto algorithms using the system must be updated with time, and it is necessary to have control over all crypto using the system. For the crypto point of view, if the system can't be considered uh, secure if you use uh, any insecure algorithm or if you use like uh, secure algorithms but in wrong ways. Now, imagine if each application brought their own crypto. We would have to fix bugs and review every package or application in the system. That would take a reasonable time, effectively making it impossible to uh, ensure that only secure algorithms are used in a secure way. So, having a lot of crypto implementation, the system uh, makes it difficult to maintain tests. It's a lot of code that we have to support and, and review. Uh, makes it hard to control user algorithms and keys. Uh, I mean, uh, you have to have control on, on the configuration of the system to make sure that uh, all applications uh, use only secure algorithms and, and in a secure way. It's hard to ensure secure crypto usage. Uh, like I said, the protocols, uh, the key size and algorithms, they have to be secure. Uh, and so we conclude that the applications must be consistent and rely on a small set of crypto components so that we can control everything and, and be sure that they are safe. So instead of having a system like this, uh, we would like to have a system like this where the applications rely on a small set of crypto components. So, and how to ensure interoperability? Uh, if we have one application dependent on a crypto library and another application relying on a different library, how can we be sure that they will work together? Uh, 
Uh, that's only possible if both crypto libraries implement uh, a well-defined standard and, and specification. Uh, those standards are, are usually defined by uh, IETF to RFCs or, or things like this. So we can make sure that they work together. And how to ensure interoperability with a legacy system. Uh, so the system must be uh, flexible enough to uh, allow a configuration of, of, of the system for a more, uh, permissive, in a more permissive way to allow it to, to work with legacy systems so that we can be sure that it interoperates with legacy systems. So uh, for interoperability, we need to comply with standards and specifications and uh, to allow uh, configuration for legacy systems. And how about quality? Uh, from the ISO definition, uh, the International Organization for Standardization, quality is this uh, <laughs> sentence, uh, the totality of features and characteristics of product or service that bear on its ability to satisfy stated or implied needs. In simple words, a product has good quality if it complies with the requirements specified, specified by the client. So a customer uh, provides a set of requirements. And inside these requirements, uh, they have uh, requirements for security and crypto. And from these requirements uh, are derived the validation tests. So we take these validation tests and uh, a crypto component, and we, we make it go through the validation process to get a, a, a validation uh, crypto component, a, a certified crypto component. So we can use this certification to prove the compliance with the set of requirements uh, stated by the, the client. Uh, obviously, that, that is an oversimplification of the validation process, but uh, it, it works for illustration. Uh, so if all the crypto components in the system are certified and uh, are used in, in an uh, approved way, we can say that the whole system is, is compliant with that re those requirements. Uh, but in the other way, if part of the system is not uh, certified or used in a, a non-approved way, we can't say that anymore. So we, we lose this uh, uh, compliant uh, state of the system. So, and that doesn't work for customer because it doesn't uh, meet the requirements. <coughs> so different customers have different requirements. Uh, for example, uh, the US government requires FIPS, uh, the uh, financial sector requires uh, PCI DSS, and uh, others require uh, common criteria. So uh, to sell the system to, to these customers, uh, it's necessary to provide a certification for different uh, uh, require, um, standards. So, uh, for some standards, certification is required to prove the system compliance. In other words, certification is a way to prove the quality of the system. So, what we provide in RAP? <laughs> we provide a core crypto components, uh, which is a small set of crypto components. Uh, and having a small set of crypto components allows us to have consistency across applications because uh, then the applications would rely on a small set of uh, certified and verified crypto components. Uh, it makes the attack surface smaller, which means uh, less probability of having a vulnerability or, or a security issue. Uh, it also gives us less code to maintain and test, uh, allows to the control of the system crypto configuration, uh, like the size of the keys, the algorithms used, uh, the protocols allowed. And, so, and that allows us to prove the security claims uh, we, we make, like that the system is compliant with some requirements. 
So this is a set of uh, car crypto components we provide. Uh, it may seem a lot, but it, it's really a small set of the crypto components available. And these do not include all crypto related packages in RHEL, but these are the, the car crypto components. For a developer wanted to write a new application, I would uh, recommend to check checking this first. Uh, it's important to remind that the effort made to make it secure and comply with standards and certified are pushed upstream, so the community can enjoy the benefits of this effort. So uh, we provide uh, quality assurance uh, through integration testing uh, to make sure the applications and the crypto libraries uh, work with each other and also to make sure that uh, different versions uh, work with each other. Uh, we use regression testing to make sure that fixed bugs don't come back and that uh, the behavior of the system doesn't change uh, between versions. Uh, we have standards compliance testing that's to make sure that the, the system is uh, compliant and that it, it is uh, certifiable. So, uh, for example, uh, for testing the compliance with uh, TOS, uh, we use uh, TOS Fuzzer. It's a tool uh, maintained by our teammate, uh, Hubert Cario, and it, it uh, tests for compliance with the uh, many uh, several RFCs. Uh, it uh, tries to uh, test your, your library in the point of, uh, from the point of view of a, an attacker, like using more formed uh, packages and, and stuff like this. It's interesting. If you uh, click it, that link, we will, uh, it will lead you to the repository. And we do testing for certification requirements um, for FIPS, common criteria, to make sure uh, they, they are certifiable. So, um, different countries have different laws and regulations. So we have to make sure the, the crypto components we deliver, uh, they, they, um, they follow the rules of each country where we, we want to sell the, the system. So uh, some algorithms are restricted in some countries uh, and some algorithms have patents that we have to make sure that we don't ship uh, those algorithms in our, our system. Uh, so that is verified by extensive code review uh, to all the, the applications in the system which require uh, crypto. So we, uh, that also allows us uh, in this code review uh, we can uh, check if uh, non-allowed algorithms are, are shipped or uh, if uh, there are like non-allowed protocols inside the, the libraries. Mm -hmm. We also provide a crypto policies, uh, which is new in uh, Rally, uh, Beta and Fedora. Uh, I will not uh, go uh, deep in, in, in this uh, component because uh, there is uh, one talk. Uh, I recommend you to attend the talk from our teammate, Tomas, uh, about the crypto, uh, crypto policies to get more details about this. But uh, quickly, uh, going to the available profiles, uh, the default profile is uh, modern, secure. It, it, uh, it removed uh, like insecure algorithms, but still have SHA-1 uh, for usability because uh, the world is not uh, ready yet for the disablement of SHA-1 in signatures. Um, okay. um, a uh, legacy uh, profile is uh, intended to be used for, for legacy systems. Um, it allows some um, uh, kind of insecure algorithms and uh, smaller keys. Uh, and future uh, is uh, a more restrictive uh, profile which uses large keys and uh, removes sha for example, uh, in this. Uh, and FIPS, which is the FIPS compliant uh, uh, profile. So how do we choose our car crypto libraries? 
uh, we, one of the aspects we consider when uh, we are choosing our crypto, uh, core crypto libraries uh, is the community. Like, the popularity is important because uh, if a library is more popular, it means that we have more reach, uh, like changing those libraries would uh, um, affect more people and more applications. Uh, we also consider the active contributors. Um, the, like, it's necessary to have active contributors to uh, allow us to fix bugs, uh, fix uh, security vulnerabilities more quickly, uh, to implement new features. And we work really close to upstream, so um, it's interesting to have a friendly upstream so that we can uh, cooperate and contribute to fixing bugs and adding new features. And uh, also, it's important to have a, fr a friendly upstream because then we can make the changes uh, we have to make to make the, the, the library uh, certifiable, for example. Because uh, for some testing, like FIPS, you need to have uh, specialized uh, APIs uh, uh, which you will, um, which is used in the testing. So uh, we have to have cooperation of the upstream to, to make this uh, into their library or their project. Mm. Sorry. Okay. Uh, we also consider the stability of the, the project. Uh, the proje project has to uh, have a version control system like Git so that we can track uh, uh, all the changes that are made uh, in which version uh, they were introduced. Uh, we also require API and API stability. That is, that is really important for long-term support uh, like, because that allows us to uh, update a library without breaking the, the applications. So uh, a simple versioning is a way to uh, keep the API and the API stable uh, and, and to make up, uh, updates that won't break the applications. So we can uh, update the application. <laughs> okay, uh, we also consider the quality of the project. Um, uh, we consider the um, the methods used by the, the project to uh, ensure their quality, like uh, continuous integration is one uh, thing that we, we consider really important for a project to have. Uh, and even better if they run a CI test for every change made to the code, like every push. Uh, there are many uh, CI platforms available and most of them are free uh, for open source projects. Uh, probably you heard about uh, Travis and, and GitLab CI and there are others. Uh, so, uh, we also consider if the project follow best practices. Uh, as a guideline, we recommend uh, following the best practices defined by the Linux Foundation uh, in the Core Infrastructure Initiative. Uh, so, I put there a link. If you click there, you can see uh, what the project has to, to do to, to get the badge. Um, we also require the libraries to be thread safe, uh, to like, be able to be used in, in a thread, uh, multi-thread scenario. Uh, we require there to have complied with standards which means implementing the specifications in the right way. For example, uh, like I said before, we use tools like TLS Fuzzer to check if the implementation is correct, like if it uh, returns the, the right alerts when, when the error occurs and, and, and things like this. Like. Okay, um, so, uh, this is all. I will give a summary. What to remember? Uh, the definition of securing crypto changes with time. 
So we have to update the the uh, the algorithms used and the, the configuration of the system with time. It's not something that will be abuse, absolutely uh, secure in the crypto point of view forever. Uh, having a small set of supported crypto components is beneficial so that we can control all uh, the crypto usage and uh, the crypto configuration in the system. Uh, certification is a way to prove compliance with a set of requirements. Uh, that means that if, uh, if someone requires some uh, specification or some standard, you can provide a, a, a certified uh, uh, library to, to uh, prove that you comply with those requirements. Uh, to prove the system compliance, the whole system must, must uh, use only certified crypto and in approved ways. So if you use uh, uncertified crypto or uh, you use certified crypto but in, in the wrong way, then you can't uh, say that your system is compliant. And various aspects are analyzed when selecting the core crypto libraries. Uh, we, we don't put any, like uh, random stuff inside RHEL. We choose, uh, we analyze and, and choose uh, the most popular, uh, which have uh, good quality and etc. So, questions? Okay. I guess there are no questions. So, thank you.